What, are you just gonna stand there and watch? Uh... Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna go kill myself. Bye! That's a bit dramatic. You could've just pushed him down instead. So after they both take the plunge, Sky takes him to see something weird. Evidence that the Time Lords got here first. Either that or one of those fucking Magrathians autographed his handiwork. Norway, Slotty Bartfar's signature on the glacier. Whichever's nerdier. Looks like some kind of geometry or something. These are actually equations scored into the rocks by what is sure to be a tiresome story arc. You tell Taylor about this place? No, we're not even supposed to be out here. This whole area is off limits. It's like Taylor doesn't want anyone to know about this. Don't tell anybody about this. Hey, new guy, check out this cool thing. By the way, if anyone finds out about this weird shit that might rewrite your understanding of history, the crazed military leader of the colony will probably shoot you. And I have fun explaining how you got soaked. Seeing as this is the only watering hole anywhere near the colony, maha! Although, to be fair, there are other ways to get wet in a jungle, and it looks like they're already setting one up. Anyway, back at the medical bay, Elizabeth is treating a guy who stole some stuff and siphoned off the colony's power supply, aka using it, which is what colonists do in a colony. Why would they need to do that? They're sixes. Sixes. Sixer? Isn't that what they call a pervert in New Zealand? Sixes. Holy shit, she said the secret word. I love how he had to attack before she found out he was dangerous. That's some Sun Tzu shit right there. I remember the last episode of the show, my review show, when she had to treat a guy using weird prehistoric shit that she had no idea about. Whoa. Whoa, is that, is that a technical term? And now she's treating an unsedated violent criminal in a famous gang that she didn't even know existed. Sixes. They were the 49ers, but they hit a bad streak, lost 43, and turned to crime. Is this why there are so many people in the queue to get here? They throw people into the deep end without explanation and end up using the majority for fertilizer because it's a bunch of replacements. And I'm not blaming her. The city it should have insisted on securing the guy or keeping him sedated. But nah, because thinking of reasons for shit to happen is hard. I just noticed something else. The commitment to being dumb on the part of the colony or the makers of the show or whatever is so serious that they put a fucking doctor in their fucking emergency room in a white absorbent outfit, cutting such a way to get blood down her cleavage. So the Sixer escapes and steals a beige coat, a perfect disguise, as the only people who don't wear beige are important characters in the military. Luckily, Jim, an ex-cop, has a weird, shifty sense where he can instantly tell the difference between a criminal and somebody who looks like a hipster in a tight jacket. Or possibly somebody's just a little shell-shocked because it has travelled back millions of years to an environment that literally makes them high. Jim is such a shifty wanker, I'm frankly amazed he doesn't sit himself off and he looks in the mirror. And he spots this guy doing his oh so suspicious walking, so Jim abandons his actual job. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be right back. And we're gonna do more stuff with the with the thing. And stops him from getting down Taylor. Throw him in a brick. Oh they do have one of those. I bet that looks fucking ridiculous. Hey, um, what exactly was the Sixers' plan here? Going with a whole team to steal electricity? Him and his buddies were siphoning off our power grid. All get caught, trust that they wouldn't be sedated, escape and hope there'd be no security near Taylor and then shoot him? Or was the assassination attempt a spur-of-the-moment thing that was inspired by how little security there was in the medical bay? I really want to know how much I should be complaining. And who I at. Do you want to tell me who that was and what the hell's going on here? No. Why would I do that? You're a criminal who shouldn't be here. Who's lucky I haven't fed him to a Spinosaurus. Thanks for saving my life and stuff, now piss off. Now, obviously, that's what an actual crazed military leader in charge was in Colony on the Frontier would say. Come on, there's a lot about this place you need to know. I kind of love the slow zoom in his face after that line. It's like the hamster wheel is turning and for a moment he's realizing that he doesn't actually need to know, but he's the main character, so he will. Anyway, what's the deal with the Sixers? Another settlement that split away from Terra Nova. They call them that because they all came through on the Sixth Pilgrimage. Alright, so a group of people who all came through at the same time are working together for nefarious purposes. Okay, why don't you just have images of everyone who comes to the portal and use the security cameras that you can use for things other than perving at Jim? To search for those faces and then stop them from getting into the colony? Or is that too much like security for this fucking theme park? Oh wait, sorry, this one's banned from a theme park. The security makes sure they stay off the property. Anyway, Taylor's not sure how the whole Sixth Pilgrimage was taken over by these assholes, and until he does, he doesn't want to make any noises about this to the future. Until we know who sent those people back and why, I just don't know who in the future I can trust. Um, Taylor, you clearly have some kind of contact with the future. Don't know how, it's dumb. You should probably assume that the Sixers also do. And they hightailed it like thieves in the night. 
pilfered a significant amount of equipment. But keeping it a secret, only the bad guys in the future know what's going on. I just don't know who in the future I can trust. What are the bad guys gonna do? Send more people back? Why aren't they already doing that? Pell, why do they take over a whole fucking pilgrimage? Which is still a dumb fucking name. Why not send people over in each one, make them sleeper cells, get them integrated into all areas of society, and then take over? But again, that'd be too much like a fucking plan. This is what we're fighting for, Jim. Terrible green screen? Even for TV in 2011? This is supposed to be one of the show's money shots, and they might as well have come on a wall. It'll look more impressive. Anyway, Taylor makes Jim part of his own personal security detail. I hope for the rest of the show, they periodically cut back to his boss back at the farm, still waiting for him to return. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right back, and we're gonna do more stuff with the, with the thing. But if they don't, I probably will. What is it? Taylor to base. Gotta pay our transports inbound. Now we're driving. Time for an action scene. You can tell that the body armor the Terra Nova security wears is terrible because, well, look at it, it'll do nothing against a sheep, let alone a fucking dinosaur. But also because none of the main characters wear it, and it seems that most of the people who do are currently behind the fucking walls, where they won't have to find out how shit it is. Here are some six sixers out in a mission, but what mission? To advance the plot one second at a time. Seeing as the Sixers are driving around in some vintage G.I. Joe vehicles, I'm confused about why Taylor's having trouble tracking them down. I mean, there aren't many dinosaurs that you can mistake those tracks for. Anyway, dinosaur time, it's a Carnosaurus, one of the few dinosaurs the show didn't invent. Sort of, it's an informal name for a few different species. I looked it up. We're all clear! <laughs> okay, so that's the best bit so far. Also, nice to be proven right about the armor. I hate Carnotaurus. Anyway, in what is fast becoming a bit of a theme in this show, I'm not really sure what the Sixers plan was here. Because once the Carnosaurus has got involved, it suddenly becomes drive into Terra Nova while they're distracted by blasting them. Sonics, go! Was this a frontal assault that got interrupted? Or did they deliberately attract the dinos and then spend the whole journey shooting them at a habat? So, uh, what happens when the dinosaurs attack the vast majority of the walls that don't have those guns? You're just gonna gas yourself again? Even harder? And with the Sixers who emerge from their vehicles for some drama, drum -drum drama, drum -drum drama that I don't care about. Came here for a reason. You've got one of my people. Correction, they have several of your people. Him and his buddies were siphoning off our power grid. Carter got shot. Wait, you knew the guy's name and recognized him on sight? I can't tell who this is more of a searing indictment of. The Terra Novans, for not spotting the famous guy until he tapped into their power grid, forgot to tie him up and then let him get close to Taylor. Or the Sixers, for sending a famous guy to be a spy and then to assassinate a guy who knows him. We want Carter, you son of a bitch! We want him down! I don't know why this is such a tense standoff. The Terra Novans have regular guns, gas, those sound guns, more people, and that armor. If it does anything. The Sixers are out in the open, unarmored, outnumbered, and defended on the Earth Tones. And on the subject of Earth Tones, I've noticed that the Sixers are mostly non-white, and the Terra Novans are mostly white. This is probably either very bad or even worse. In anyway, exchange for Carter, the Sixers are offering something. A trade. Meteoric iron. They control the quarry. Okay, unless they're also constantly getting supplies and stuff from the future, like the Terranovans, then so what? Go take it from them. They can't run off with it and hide in the jungle. Or just wait a while and then go take it from them. You're always getting more people and supplies. They're not. Guzman, get Carter out of the brig. We're not finished building that set anyhow. Anyway, Mira, the sexy rebel leader, spots Jam. You're new. You have the rugged and bemused look of a man who'd be cast as a lead in a short-lived and expensive TV series. So I'll acknowledge you. Uh, thanks. Welcome to paradise. And our emergency over, so let's get back to the 30-year-olds pretending to be teens. I kind of love how Sky's friends are so unimportant that they only appear when they have lines. Last time they talked but all going out, then Sky and Josh went out, hung out by the waterfall, and now they're all hanging out as though they've been together the whole time. Most things would just have them be set dressing when they don't have anything to add, like no lines to just put them in the background. But this did a more advanced version of that by forgetting to bring the actors in. Anyway, they have a still, as in a still waiting for it to ferment. Could use a couple more days, maybe, but... Yeah, it's not bad. 
that is moonshine. Cretaceous style. Meaning you'll get your eyesight back in a few million years. What's it made from? Uh, we call them fruits. You know, as in part fruit, part nut. Oh, me then. No wonder he gagged. Anyway, back at the colony, Dr. Elizabeth has been quizzed by a man who already knows the important answers to the stuff that he's asking about. Still, you chose to come here. Why? Uh... She smuggled her illegal daughter and jailed husband here where the law can't touch them. I love it when someone forgets earlier in the same episode. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Though to be fair, maybe they haven't filmed that bit yet. Turns out that Taylor's son arrived in the second pilgrimage, was a scientist, and went missing some time ago. Worked right here in the science division. He went missing a few years back. I smell a story arc. It smells like sweat and dinosaur farts in the distance. Oh, no, sorry, that's just a scene. Most of the teens have vanished again, and Josh is asking about the gnarly knives that they're using. What is this? They look like Ginsu, redesigned by the fucking idiot who ruined the Klingons in Star Trek Discovery. Turns out that they're barbs from the tail of a made-up dinosaur called a slasher. Easily identifiable by their slow, deliberate movements and their characteristic use of masks. Don't worry, they mostly hunt at night. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. Mostly? As all discussions in this eventually do, they start to talk about Jim. He's the main character, not just of the show, but of everyone's lives. They talk about how similar he and Josh are, what with the rule breaking and being twats and people randomly being drawn to them and all. Yeah, you guys are pretty different. She's right, but I'm not sure if telling a guy that he's just like the dad that he hates is the best way to keep your new friend. Pretty different. And with the Sixers had dropped two of their guys, a red shirt and the most famous Pierre of them all, on their way back to base. They saw the teen's car, figured it's abandoned, and want to steal the battery. But really, they realized we haven't seen any dinosaurs in a few minutes and figured that the red shirt and famous Pierre should be used as bait. I got it. Let's get out of here. Nobody can beat famous Pierre. He's too famous to lose. What? That slasher is now the king of lunch ball. What was that? The sound of the other teens teleporting in. Anyway, they decide it's probably about time to head home. Unfortunately, the red shirt and famous Pierre stole the armored car's battery, so they're moderately screwed. Transport's dead. Only moderately, because the armored car is still armored. And if they all die in the night because there's no doors, well, that's something to sue the manufacturers over. This is all immaterial, though, because they end up trapped in the Sixers vehicle, which, like everything else about them, is primarily made of earth tones. Slash the run! No. Get away from me! Hey, I, I remember you, Drake. Right? It's me, Sky. I know your name. This means we're friends. Sky! That's not how Rumpelstiltskin works. Shh, the writers don't know that. Get out! Come on, go! Get out! Get out! The slasher stalks around, obsessively looking for an opening to the canned food within. Then eventually it realizes that someone left the hatch open and no one fucking noticed until seconds before it dead. So these people in a darkish car didn't notice the actual sunroof above them. Anyway, the Terranovans finally noticed they were missing an armored car and remembered they have security cameras. Josh. And so have sent out a rescue party. I was falling. You know, they should probably set more stuff at night. The set's like almost impressive. I was gonna make an obvious joke about Taylor leaving the kids to die if he wasn't buddies with Josh's dad. But then this happened. Hunter Boyce is missing. Max Pope too. And another one. Who? My daughter. There's five kids. He works with 40% of them's dads. So I'm not even sure it would be a joke. Like all good rescue missions, they suit up in the plastic armor and bring a doctor. Not for a sensible reason, like one of the teens might be hurt. She demanded to go because Josh is her son and worry clearly makes her better at her job. Our son is out yeah, there. Yeah, let me handle it. No, you handling it is why he's out there in the first place. Look, I know you're scared for your boy. You have every reason to be. But the point is, this jungle can be survived. So it turns out that there was a fuck up in the initial time jump back at the start of the colony and Taylor ended up arriving about four months before the rest was man. Which goes part of the way to explain his fun mix of stupid, erratic, and badass. For them it was just the blink of an eye. For me, 118 days. It doesn't explain the Popeye gurning while he does the story though. This show has a weird lack of drone technology. I mean, yeah, this is over 10 years old, but surely someone in 2011 worked out that remote-controlled flying robots would eventually become a thing? I mean, they literally existed before that. <laughs> Why does it keep making that sound? Oh god, there's another one! Luckily for them, the radio eventually starts working. Anybody hear this? We need help. Come in, Terranova! 
unluckily for them, the dinosaurs don't give a fuck. <laughs> Say that again and say again about Slash. Are you doing that? We're over 80 kilometers east 80 kilometers? Through jungle? Not only are they fucking dead, they should still be driving because there's no fucking way they drove 80 kilometers in a single day in the fucking jungle. The closest thing to this jungle on Earth right now is probably the Darien Gap, a chunk of undeveloped land between Panama and Colombia. A crossing of it was made in a jeep in the 60s. It took more than four months and the average about 200 meters an hour. Are you doing that? We're over 80 kilometers east of That's Josh. Jim, that's Josh. No one else but your kid could be that wrong. But everyone else who gives their location talks about meters instead of kilometers, so maybe I'm the asshole. About 80 meters down from 80 meters! I said we're about 80 meters down from and anyway, the budget was so stretched for this point for all the effects that they need less actors, and she drew the short straw. So she needs to be a fucking idiot. Hi. Hey. What are you doing here? Well, with everything going on, I wanted to make sure you were okay. Okay, so who the fuck is this guy? other than an usually handsome flesh golem. He's the guy who showed them to their house and had a very short scene with her earlier on. Here we are. It's really noisy when dinosaurs snore. Well, actually, Brachiosauri aren't actually true herbivores, they- So they're a couple now. Um, if you need anything, just- Don't go. Uh, Zoe's scared. Don't ask me to explain, because I can't explain straight people. Okay. So the one who ran off survived her running with the slasher, so either she seduced it and snuck off while it basked in the afterglow, Slasher's came. or the show successfully made us worry less about the kids stuck in the armored car because they're really easy to defeat. I can't believe it took me this long to notice it, but Jim looks a lot like a slightly macho Kirk Cameron. Luckily, I can't physically hate him any more than I already do. Well, she's dead, or alive, or dying. Anyway, they're off to find the others, but what the fuck ancient Dennisor Floodlet is doing that behind them? So the teens have finally come up with a plan. If Hunter and I cover you, how fast do you think you can get those power cells installed? <sighs> Maybe five, ten minutes? I say we make a run for our rover. Normally, that would be a stupid plan, but this truck is made of tissue paper. <laughs> At least I didn't eat Malcolm. I imagine adding a heroin addiction wouldn't make the dinners any more friendly. Anyway, do you want to hear something hilariously ironic? I'm not going to let anybody stand in the way of what we are building here. Terra Nova will succeed. Yeah, for about ten more episodes. Yeah. Anyway, how are the teens doing? Terribly, I bet. We gotta get into the rover. What about Hunter? I'll stay and cover him. You guys just get those power cells in and get the thing moving. <laughs> they didn't even make it to the car and it's like 30 feet away. She's out of ammo, Malcolm's down, the other guy's leg is fucked, and tragically, Josh is related to Jim. So they're screwed. It's time for the grown-ups and their grown-up weapons to save the day. Establish your perimeter! Those green laser bolts fly slower than the dinosaurs run at top speed. This scene is the most expensive game of laser tag ever devised. <laughs> So with the dinosaurs on the run, they turn their attention to that six that they left in the van. He's gone. Mira. She came for her man. When? When the thing was crawling with teens? I mean, it's possible they did ignore him almost the whole time. Or when the dinosaurs were all over it? Or did they sneak up with their tanks and the firefight was going on? It's probably supposed to be the third one, but I think the most likely thing is he was grabbed and dragged away into the jungle by one of the dinos. I mean, that's literally what one of them tried to do with this guy. And anyway, they make it back to base just in time for this touching reunion. Physically, I mean, not emotional because you. So, just what were you all doing out there in the house? Drinking. <laughs> Didn't go anywhere near the falls, did he? No, sir. Good. Good, because I'd hate to cancel out that rescue I just did. 
And uh, we end on some confirmation that it was Taylor's son who left the markings at the falls, because that's the story arc. I still don't get why the crazy bastard does this out here. Why do you think? Throw it in his old man's face. We're stuck with that. And then we see the moon, it's moving away from the earth steadily, so it's larger in the ancient night sky. Good for it, the man on the moon can get a better peek down at people's cleavage. Well, this is still bad. Like I said, overall it looks a little better at night, but it's still dumb and tiresome. The scale of the project is impressive, but the giant colony set looks like a resort. And the digital effects are sometimes bafflingly terrible, even for 2011. The only person I'm liking so far is Taylor, and that's because I could totally see him going nuts and burning the whole fucking place down. Please go nuts and burn the whole fucking place down. We fucked, it's a dinosaur, Jesus Christ, what the fuck?